everybody, and welcome to the Extra Credits Book Podcast. I'm your host. <laughs> My other host. Alex Green. That's right. And, uh, boy. We got a surprise. Yeah, a pleasant one for once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as much as we roasted and lambasted and rightfully uh, dug a grave for this book last time, mm -hmm. uh, it decided to turn into a good book. <laughs> I haven't heard the word like lambasted in a long time, and I really appreciate hearing it <clears throat> now. Because it's true. I like because the last part that we listened to kind of left off on a kind like a fun cliffhanger yeah and so i was really looking forward to part two because i was like well they both died in spache what yeah. now and to a degree it didn't disappoint yeah to a I, degree i was worried that we were going to like it was going to be one of those books where are all the way back at the beginning and then in order to like build tension yeah thankfully yeah because it did start by repeating a couple sentences from earlier in the book when ambrose has just woken up and he is like did rover just take a shit and then the ai is like yeah and you're gonna eat it Very and funny. yeah they just really latched onto this one joke because they repeat it a couple more times. <laughs> it's great stuff. The humor here is very like anytime like a a joke is made, it's very like twelve year old humor. Yeah, it's super juvenile. Mm -hmm. Which I guess is like this is a young adult book. So, but even me as it well, it's like marketed as young adult sci fi. So, if I was a young adult, would I still find it funny? Probably no, but. At the same time, I don't know. If I was, like, 14 reading this, I might think it's, like, kind of silly and fun. Yeah. And uh, the book, to its credit, does the most gracious thing of all. That's fast forward, skipping over all of the uh, choice sexual predator moments from Amber. Yeah. Yeah, like this iteration of Ambrose, because we're not really sure what happens. Like they die and then they wake back, like Ambrose is waking back up on yep. the ship. And so they start doing time skips, but they're going through very similar interactions that they had. We just get less of Ambrose's like pervy inner monologue about everything that's going on. Yeah. But it does seem like Kodiak is like more forward with like bridging a connection with him this time around i think that catalyst the, the dead room right because they built the blind room yeah. last time so that the os couldn't get in there right and they could start listening to those radio signals and they found it early on and that's when Kodiak was like, something weird is going on. We should stick right. together. In, yes. so, in a begrudging way. Mm -hmm. But I um, think that's why it's more like Kodiak is the one building a connection. So, to be honest, the connection that they build in this, like, port, like in this life cycle. Yeah. <laughs> wait you don't think it's like supernatural and like the chemistry is like sizzling because <laughs> ambrose is still bullying him and, uh being affectionate even though yeah even though the story likes to pretend that it's kodiak who initiates all of the uh hot and heavy stuff <laughs> but it just seems so out of character. Well, it's interesting to try and balance out the development of the the development of like what Kodiak's like 
I guess, amicability towards Ambrose, like in the first life cycle that we had with them. And so they're like, well, we got to build off of it because it's later in the book. So they just kind of accelerate these feelings yeah. he may or may not have felt from the start and was like, avoiding them because he's just like closed off but it's hard to tell and it does classic. feel a little like contrived yeah classic tough guy uh there was a point sort of when it, it's past like <clears throat> uh past the point of like where the last two got Last two referring to the previous Kodiak and Ambrose. And by beyond the point, do you mean like relationship wise or like I mean, tasks in, wise or in like distance? In terms of how far they were progressed in the uh we have to rebel against the chip phase. Right, okay. Uh, <clears throat> because I think they were pressed out about something. Oh no, uh, Kodiak was Kodiak was working out on a treadmill and he had like the uh, strap around his waist so that he wouldn't go anywhere and Ambrose made fun of him like, ooh, tough guy has to use a strap for his treadmill. And mm -hmm. I made a note that um, uh, it's very funny that Ambrose thinks uh, treadmills are for tough guys. <laughs> Well, it I think really, it's just he's really straps telling on, on treadmills are for tough guys. Well, yeah, like, and it's funny because I don't remember internalizing the information that the Space Academy was his family's Space Academy. Right. Um, but he mentions like the Cusk Space Academy a ton of times, so it's just like he's just like a full nepo baby. Like, had to do no physical no exercise, work. no gladiator style arena. Uh, moments with his other like cadets just wrote like one paper that's kind of like the essay that Steve wrote in Stranger Things when he's applying for college and you get a glimpse of the <clears throat> essay and it's like the clock is down at two seconds and I, Steve Harrington, have the ball and it's like <laughs> that level <laughs> yeah. and that's how we that's how we got into space uh, but like the the big turning point for them is that they find the radio set that the previous Kodiak built yeah. and they listen to it. And not only do they find like a radio signal way faster than the previous batch did. Yeah. But, uh, the news they receive is. No, because last time, if I remember correctly, they, it was the year like 4,000 something. I think it was like 6,000 something. I can find it. Because I uh, have all my notes <clears throat> right here. Yeah, you're right. It was uh, 6,000. Yeah, 6,000 ish years. Something. In the future. Wait, I don't even know anymore. The time thing like really broke my brain last time. And the report they were getting was from like an automated AI back on Earth that was basically like, is anybody out there? Hello. Um, yeah. And it kept repeating oh, the yeah. date, which uh, at the time they were hearing it, 8,102. Oh, okay, right. Okay, so they were back way earlier. Like, it says the broadcast that they listened to before was from 2,615. Right. And that was 140 years into their future. So then this is like thousands of years later yeah. and you're like, what? <clears throat> right. It was only 400 years before 200. 400. Yeah. No, 140. <laughs> right. You just said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Numbers are not my strong suit. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the first time they were like freaking out because they were 140 years further into the future than they thought they were. Yeah. And this time when they're hearing like 8,102. They're like, like 6,000 years into the future. They lose their mind to a degree that I thought was outrageous. 
Because if someone were to tell me that, oh, I, if I left Earth in the year 2023, and then I go to sleep and wake up, and they tell me it's the year 8,102, I would think that's a joke. That's such an outrageous number. Yeah. Well, they kind of think that. Like, Kodiak's like, oh, someone's playing a prank on us. And then Ambers is like, yeah, you're probably right. Like, you can put, you can say anything on the radio. Like, there's no, there's no, like, yeah. fact checking. You can just say whatever. Uh, and then they try to talk to the AI about it. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. La 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 la. I yeah, don't know what you're saying. What are you talking about? No, it's it's still the year 24 something or other. Uh, relax. Yeah, and and they're trying to get OS to tell them about like the blind room that their previous iterations created. Oh yeah. And the OS is like, well, I can't see that. It's like programmed blindness towards it. Uh, this happened long before you started serving on this ship. And like when they went into the room, it was like really dusty and shit too. Yeah. And and Ambrose is like, what do you mean long before we served on this ship? Like, why don't you just clean it up? Like we're supposed to be like the first people on this ship. What's, what's the deal? And yeah. they just kind of like brush it off for a while. <clears throat> and then they go back to like their little courtship and Kodiak starts like coming around to Ambrose as part of the ship. Like, even when they're not working on stuff and like even when Ambrose is like mid fantasizing in bed about Kodiak and he has like a huge bare boner and Kodiak's like, oh, I got to go. <laughs> Just fully jerking off. <laughs> uh, but something that like uh, triggers their suspicion meter, it, like ticks it forward a little bit is when they're talking about the blind room and the AI says, hey, let me back in there. That way I can return it to its previous setting. And they're like, what do you mean previous? That's right. Yeah. I think that's happening <clears throat> like in that little treadmill scene too, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, I made a note because uh, Manicotti gets mentioned. <laughs> More like, than 18 times. <laughs> and... To my recollection, Manicotti is not like a groundbreaking. No, but I think it's like the closest thing they have to pizza on the ship. And I think pizza is, you know, Alexander the Great's DNA infused offspring's favorite food. Right. And I made a note that uh, the Manicotti thing is like when couples try to make anything their thing. <laughs> because they have nothing in common. Yeah. It honestly, it's like such like big Disney adult vibes. Uh, I can't explain yeah, why, true. but it yeah. kind of is. <laughs> <clears throat> Disney adults are notorious for doing that kind of like, oh my God, this is our thing. Like, this is our tradition going to Disneyland. It's how we met because we don't have a personality. We just go to Disneyland. Yeah. Wearing the matching ears. And Stop. then, and then when Stop they get it, engaged, they, they do the top hat Mickey ears and the veil mini ears. <laughs> you should be shot for that. It should be some kind of like sinister uh, Logan's Run type of shit, where if you go to Disneyland and you've got the little top hat and veil mini <laughs> Mickey and mini ears, they're like, "Oh my gosh, come right this way." Then they take you into a back room and shoot you, and you become part of Pirates of the Caribbean. One of the skeletons. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I, I remember seeing a TikTok a while ago of, like, um, somebody having their, like, bachelorette party at Disneyland, and it was so horrific that I thought it was a joke, but it wasn't <laughs> a joke. They were being dead serious. They all had, like, custom shirts with terrible Disney puns, and they went down a line. It was like watching one of those, like, sorority initiation videos where, like, they're all in a giant, like, three-tiered arrangement, <clears throat> like, chanting something at you. It was, like, that energy, but they were going down a line with their Disney shirt puns, and they all had the ears, and I... I think I just dissociated watching it, but they were serious and it wasn't a lie. It's uh, sinister. Yeah, it is sinister, but I, I think they had a nice day. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, I also wrote a note, uh, speaking of uh, Ambrose's huge boner. 
Yeah. Uh, I made <laughs> well, a we, note. We, that's generous. We don't know it's huge. Like it, that's it could true. Be. He, he could have up. a micro penis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I made a note where I said you could not catch me jerking off in a spaceship where an AI watches your every move. Oh, I no. would be dead before I even think about giving that a shot. Yeah. Like yeah, I don't a need, lifetime especially of especially when the AI is my mom's voice, dude. Yeah, that's a little. No way. No. <laughs> Might as well just never have one. No, it's not worth it. <laughs> no, I don't need like the AI being like your technique is poor. <laughs> In your mom's voice. <laughs> Put me out the airlock, dude. Get the yeah, next clone. On yeah uh i also I made a note been... where oh, yeah. uh which is kind of happening all at the same time because it's hard to talk about this batch of chapters because it's all just kind of things occurring yeah uh, the chronology doesn't really matter there's like a few key learnings we get but right. like the order of what those things are and how they happen is like really not that important and in the process of their little courtship where they start to get all lovey-dovey with each other, uh, I made a note where I said uh, Ambrose would 100% submit to the whims of the AI, like, mm -hmm. without question, if it meant he got to play house. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because he... It's all he wants. The, the instant he gets any kind of affection from kodiak he does do you remember in uh <laughs> that movie uh this is the end where channing tatum is in like that gimp suit and he like assumes the position <laughs> with his ass up in the air <laughs> no but it's been a long time since i've seen that movie. he's like on I a dog leash I've seen the whole thing <laughs> he's on a dog leash and he just like assumes the position on all fours with his ass stuck up in the air <laughs> when uh the guy from um been in every that mm -hmm. baseball show from found and down that's what oh danny something yeah. i always want to say danny glover but that's <clears throat> no not that's true. a black man i know <laughs> uh but yeah it's like his little fuck a gimp pet is channing tatum <laughs> And that's Shoot. what I imagine Ambrose it just is praying for. Praying for Ambrose to be like, sit down. Yeah. Well, he has goals, and good for him. <laughs> uh, but then they find the clones. Yeah, the they go into like the engine room after Kodiak punches his way in there. <laughs> yeah. And Ambrose gets electrocuted by Rover. And they see like the dry cleaners racks. And they're like a circular rail. They say there's like polycarb wrapped bags and each of them are filled with something bulbous and weighty. And the way they describe it is so gross. It's like, ooh, small globes of an oily fluid. And Kodiak's like, look, it's you. He doesn't actually do that. He's like, get out of here. It's you. Yeah. And, and my <laughs> question was uh, because all of the bags that they looked at were Ambrose. And I was like, where are they keeping the Kodiak one? Yeah. Well, they find them later. Do they? Yeah. Kodiak goes, there's another moment where Ambrose like leaves and because when Ambrose sees, finds all of his clones, he like goes catatonic. He goes full like there is a hole inside of me that can never be filled unless Kodiak fucks me immediately. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, but before he goes like full catatonic, I love this moment where he's like looking in the bags and he's like, oh, my God, if it wasn't for, like, the juice, so, like, covering the face of this body and the wet hair of this body, it would be me. And it's like, that's you, my guy. It's just it it's in you. a bag full of liquid. And then Ambrose is like, I'm feeling empty, 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 and starts, like, just yeah. shutting down to the point where Kodiak has to, like, lead him back to his room. And he's like, oh, my <gasps> God, and, like, my world has been cracked <laughs> open. And he goes, I lie on my side, the side that isn't just mine. There are 12 more of me just waiting to be used. And Kodiak straight up, like, I think you're a clone. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then Ambrose is like, I wonder if natural born humans dream the way I do. Or if I'm having 
clone dreams. Honestly, and then he's like, being a clone is the best thing to happen to Ambrose because he loves the idea of being different from everyone. True. He's a special oh little snowflake. I was made of like actually human. That makes me special of all. Yeah, but then he kind of like he he he's like, oh, I'm a creature that can feel pain, and then I think he just like shuts down and dissociates, and then Kodiak like leaves and goes to the Aurora and finds like a wire clogged passage, and then he comes back and he's like, guess what? I'm also a clone, and he's like, guess there's two clones on this ship, and he's taking it. Oh, like, that's way right. There. Right, he's like, I guess we're not alone. Yeah, Kodiak's almost like relieved to find out he's a clone. Yeah. Uh, then we get, um, the line, and I'm shooting my shot on this one. This is the line of the book. Okay. Because I doubt anything that could be uttered in, uh, next time can beat this. But Kodiak essentially, like, grabs Ambrose by the shoulders and says, Let's take control of our destinies together. And oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. Yuck! Yuck! <laughs> I think he was kind of being a little, like, facetious, but maybe he wasn't. Maybe that was just a protective mechanism my brain put in place. I don't know, but it was real range. bad. Uh, it's not quite as bad as one uh, later that I wrote down, but that that is the line of the book, because it's like, oh, no, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Um, okay. Also, at this uh, at this point... They have fully fucked off doing their task. Oh, yeah. There's, like, forever 82 tasks. <laughs> yeah. I think for... I think we heard uh, tasks remaining 82, like, 10, 12 times. Mm-hmm. And that's... I think that's how they delineate, like, chapters... Yeah, it must be like how the passage of time or paragraph breaks or something or mm -hmm. formatted. Um, and I believe this is when they concoct the notion of taking and this is where I was like, okay, my suspension of disbelief is starting to break down a little bit. Um, somehow this Ambrose knows that the shell uh, AI that he that the previous one downloaded is on his computer. He knows that. Well, I just think he finds it. I don't think so. He didn't even. There's no mention of him finding it. He's just like, "Hey, I've got this spare AI on my on my personal wristwatch computer." I think I remember him finding it and being like, "Why would somebody put this on my watch?" Maybe. Anyways. Um, Turns out I'm a, an amazing hacker. But also, if he found it, if it was tied to our, like, it seems like it would be a huge error in the AI's part to have all of the Cologne's uh, personal computer network connected to them, so. How? You know I mean? <clears throat> no, I'm like if now. Like if Ambrose... The first Ambrose was writing yeah. little diary entries in wristwatch, mm -hmm. and he dies. And then the next Ambrose comes along and sees those diaries, which is what I assume happened because there was never a moment where the first Ambrose took the AI out of his wristwatch. No, he put the AI in his watch. Right, but he never took it yeah. out. No. So, when second Ambrose turns up, how did he find it? I Did he, like, Are he must have hit it. all of the wristwatch connected? I, I guess. But then, but then they why, would find... why would they do that? The AI would find it and get rid of it. Well, maybe the AI was only looking for, like, diary entry type stuff and, like, just only deleted those and didn't think to look for, like, its shell version. But didn't Ambrose involve the AI in creating OS Prime? Right. But why kind would of? the AI leave behind anything that would imply that there has been other... Oh, for sure. The, I, and I don't feel like that was, like, appropriately addressed. No. 
But anyway, somehow, through the magic of narrative, it needs to happen. Yeah. Uh, Ambrose 2 finds Ambrose 1's, uh, like, disconnected AI. And they're like, oh, we can use this one to make it tell the truth. Because we think the one on the ship is lying to us. So they, like, engage right. in um, uh, MSN chat with the AI. And they, yeah. he, like, codes it so that it cannot lie to him. And they have a chit-chat, and we basically get the info dump of it that we already knew. Yeah. Well, Except you forgot a key part before where <clears throat> they cuddle. Oh, I didn't leave that out. <laughs> Wait, yeah, you did. It happens before they talk to the AI. Oh, that's right. I was just ignoring it. <laughs> they have tough man companion time and, like, spoon on the ground. And then they have, like, little MSN chats. Some important details. Yeah. For, because this is a most, love story, it's okay? It's the most awkward thing. Like, Ambrose is working diligently. Like, it's the only thing he's yeah. ever done this whole book so far. Yeah, the first task he's completed... He, this is the only time he's ever actually done a day's work. And right. Kodiak is like, Ambrose, you should lay down. And he's like, not right now! And when he turns yeah. around, Kodiak is in, like, the most cringe, like, sensual, on his side position. Like, yeah. huh? I Don't picture, you want like, to Zap lay down? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ambrose... Like, almost does a cartoon double take, like... Yeah. And then he immediately, like, drops everything and goes and, like, snuggles in. Yeah. As the Little Spoon, let it be known. What's wrong with being Little Spoon? Uh, nothing. It's just exactly <laughs> what he would do. Being a, the bottom bitch that he is. Wow. <laughs> um... But uh, during their little MSN chat, we find out that the original Kodiak and Ambrose were never on the ship. They only sent clones on the ship. Right. Well, do we know for sure that the originals were never sent on the ship? Yeah. Because they don't even ask. They don't ask what happened to the originals. Uh, they like, said... do you think they were just lured into a room and murdered? Or like... No, they said that um, they thought the original, like the real version thought that it was just a physical. Oh. But really, they were just having DNA taken uh, to be mm. shot up into. And we never find out what the mission is. Just know that going to Titan to rescue the dumb sister is not it, because she died <laughs> immediately. Yeah. I still don't feel like we were given <clears throat> any type of satisfying like closure about what happened to like the original Ambrose and Kodiak. Like They're did dead. they actually, well, I mean, obviously that it's like 6,000 <laughs> years in the future, but, um, but it, it like, just, did the, they the just AI live just their said, lives now? Yeah, I think so. And they didn't even know about like, I think that's what was any implied. space. Okay. Because, uh, the way it's sounding, it's like the space program was all made up. Mm, well, cause like they, the OS says Minerva's distress signal like was never like triggered, so there yeah, would have been no what... need to go to space right. to get her. And the whole reason they okay. did the this whole space training program was to go rescue her. So right. if there was never a signal, then they were probably just like, uh, "Hey, you two, it's time for a checkup," and then they got their D taken. Mm -hmm. One they just carried on. Being little Nepo baby and Slavic boy. Well, I guess they would have done like space training because they have memories of being at their respective academies. Okay, well, here's a sci fi thought experiment. If you have memories of training, does that mean you had training? No, but weren't they implanted with the memories of the real Ambrose and Kodiak? Or were all the memories made up? But then how would they have, like, very specific memories of, like, all the students Ambrose fucked? Or, like, 
all the the dudes Kodiak wrestled in his like cadet arenas. Like, I don't think they seen, would go to those lengths. Not seen Blade Runner. Yeah, I watched it with you. <laughs> you have to give you have to give the robots memories, or else they break down. Right, but it, I don't know. I still think my I still am convinced that. At least part of Ambrose's, the real Ambrose's life's memories. Were I think everything, into the everything cones. but the space program. Well, even if they weren't planning, because it's not like they went to the space academy to train for this mission. They went to the space academy to be spacefarers. Maybe that was just part of like the education system in that time period. But if that's the case. They were making it seem like they were training specifically for that mission. Well, I felt I felt it was more like they were training for space, and <clears> then it was like a mission came up, and the best people were selected. Because like could they be. didn't create, they didn't create like like Minerva went to space to like try and found a colony on Titan or whatever. So people were still training to go to space to do whatever type of mission was like selected or was necessary at the time. It could also be a failing of the world building in that never told that <laughs> the space program does anything other than send one person to Titan to die immediately and uh, two people in space to go rescue that one person. That is the extent of the space program we hear of. Well, I mean, yeah. And, like, we heard about all the world wars, three, four, and five. So that's some pretty robust world building. But those took place on Earth. Not right. in spot well, I mean, so did... Well, but the, the Space Academy training took place on Earth. Right. But my point is, because we are only led to believe... Like, we are only told about these two space missions. My brain <laughs> yeah. assumes that they are training for a specific mission. Which is right. what all... Most astronauts do. They train for a specific mission... Instead of just like, here's all the basics you need when you're going to be out there in the big wide frontier that is space, buckaroo. <laughs> you're going to need to uh, uh, fob off all your work and fuck your classmates. That's important. <laughs> and don't write worry. essays. You'll pass. Mommy owns mm -hmm. the space center. <laughs> yeah, I guess my interpretation was like, this is like university or like this is like what school is like now. Because I guess they are not old enough for university. That would uh, make sense. Yeah, but again, we're never given any real information about that. At least for now. Will <clears throat> we get any? I doubt it. But I remain hopeful. This book almost feels... I hope... This is going to sound really rude to the author, but... Uh... <laughs> it calls him like a... This book feels like he had an idea for a fun and clever space mystery mm -hmm. and saw that gay romance is rending hot. I think... It or it's the opposite. I think all his... I think if he wanted to write a gay romance because I think a lot of his books are gay romances. Maybe this was just his space mystery gay romance. Yeah. Uh, which, in that case, I'm not going to climb up his ass too hard about <laughs> sci-fi world. Yeah, give us more gays in space. <laughs> There's only so much Mass Effect fan fiction in the world, you know? Eventually people are gonna run out. <laughs> what, Mass Effect fan fiction in general? Well, I feel like you're just anti fan fiction in general. Deeply. So I can say any fandom. I'm like... deeply anti fan fiction <laughs> in every sense. <laughs> uh, unlike principle, you know? I vehemently disagree because I love fan fiction. <laughs> it's the idea. It's the idea that. It really bothers me on a fundamental level, right? Like, it really makes me uncomfortable, especially, like, the, the gay fanfic stuff, or even, like, 
even though it doesn't happen. Like, just changing a character's sexual orientation from what it is is deeply uncomfortable. It feels uh, non-consensual. It feels... Uh... What if it's a show that has queer coded characters <clears throat> and they later on go to confirm those characters were supposed to be queer i.e l woods and the person that what's her name i can't remember selma blair play that was supposed to be a lesbian romance the Ooh. writers confirmed it after in legally blonde oh <laughs> but a lot of big production studios are like, no, we're not going to put your gay stories out there because we don't want to shake the boat or rock well, the I mean, boat. In that, in that regard, sure, fine. <laughs> if, it, if it's, like, overtly queer-coded, then yeah. fine. But I'm okay. talking about, like, the Sherlock Watson stuff. Stop it. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, that one... Uh, <laughs> The, the, like, Fast and Furious one you wrote where Dom and Brian... I didn't write it. <laughs> no, no, I said read. Did I say wrote? Oh, I, I heard wrote. Oh, no, I, I meant I don't write read. Fast and Furious the, fan fiction, although maybe I should start. The Dom and Brian where they're, like, house Where husbands, they're, like, married. It's like, stop yeah. it, dude. They're That's both, kind like... Of fun, though. No, it isn't. Stop it! <laughs> they're fictional characters. At I the know end of the day, it's, it's, it's completely fiction. irrational, but it still like <laughs> really skeeves me out. I feel like I understand where you're coming from and I don't disagree with like your principles, but at the same time, like put more gay stories out there. Yes. <laughs> like put more gay I stories out like there. That's the problem. Just give that. Do all of it. Yes. If there were more, public like shows that have queer characters where one of them doesn't die and like it's <laughs> yeah. not this the one thing their one personality trait is that they're queer like give us dynamic great stories of queer characters and the need for fan fiction in a lot of cases will probably fizzle out so it's a direct response to the lack of very good widely consumed queer stories i hear what you're saying <laughs> and I agree with you, but my hands are tied. China hates it. China hates the gays. <laughs> what? They do. Every time every time there's anything <laughs> queer in movies, they've got to get rid of it before it goes to China. So you're not going to be reading Crown of Candy fan fiction anytime soon, is what you're saying. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't read uh, fan fiction anyway because um, <laughs> maybe I'm weird, but I'm satisfied when a, the whole of a show or right. film. I don't what need. I don't need to go. go. <clears throat> supernatural. I was satisfied with the first five seasons. That's it. That's all <laughs> I needed. You kill Satan. That's it. You're good. You don't need to keep going for six more years, you fucking maniacs. <laughs> when it's just a bunch of, like, mummies and skeletons in that writing room doing, like, they've died long ago. <laughs> Stop. I, I'm satisfied with the beginning and end of the, the, the arc as it was created. I, don't need... I just feel like if you read like a like a fan fiction that just like really got its hooks in you, like you'd get it. No, because <laughs> I know it's written by some weirdo. Yeah, like me. <laughs> I wrote a lot of Harry Potter fan fiction back in the day. But it was my own original character. So it's technically, <laughs> is it fan fiction if it's my own character in a world of someone else's? That's a whole other discussion. That is a, that is a good question, though. Because it could just be, maybe you were just uh, coming up with your own Harry Potter TTRPG. Well, that's true. And I feel like in the case of Harry Potter specifically, the more like gay stories you tell in 
the world of someone who or makes like just Rowling mad. That's the thing. Yeah, like fucking piss her off. Make her hate what she created and then give it to the gays. <laughs> I take it back. Just do all all Harry Potter fan fiction has to be about uh Harry and and Draco <laughs> sucking and fucking. Yes, the but way it only should in have like been. the only in their last year or after. Oh yeah, like not when they're babies. Not when they're children. children. Oh, there's some of you out there. <laughs> Fucks. Anyway. <laughs> um so, long story short, they find out that there were never any real people on this ship, and they've always been clones, and I think they're like the third incarnation? Fourth? Fifth. Because there's 12 more. Wait, what's 20 minus 12? Eight. They're the eighth. Because there were 20 sets of clones. Okay. And there's 12 more. So they're the eighth. Right, and they right? only bust out, like they they awaken these clones when the ship needs to have physical maintenance done. Yeah, and the and that's their only reason for living. Right, like that's and their only purpose. The tasks are what needs to be done, and once those tasks are complete, they get chucked out into space. Adios. Yeah, but they're and so when they're having this like MSN chat, they're like, "What about when we look out the windows and we see our solar system?" And the OS is like, "You're looking at screens. Uh, everything is a screen." And they're like, "What about when we go out on spacewalks and we see like Saturn Surprise. in our helmets?" They're like, screen. "Your helmet is a screen." <laughs> and it's all like, screens. What? Like that blows their minds more than the whole clone thing. They're My favorite more... question. They ask is when they're like, um, is it possible like we somehow manage to like go beyond the speed of light, like acceleration wise and just somehow ended up nine in the year 9000 on accident because they find out it's actually <laughs> a thousand more years later than what they heard on the radio. Yeah. And the AI is just like. No. It isn't. Yeah, I feel like this is when Kodiak like breaks mentally. Like he gets a little yeah, sad he gets about this. Real upset. Um, but he doesn't go catatonic. He just goes like white boy summer, and I think he starts like pulling apart the other half of the ship, or like yeah, yeah. He does. They're just the, like destroying he does thing, things. He does the thing where he like the dad that goes in the garage. Yeah. And you just start hearing things getting smashed. Yeah, and you just Ambrose... hear, like, tools being thrown. And... <laughs> and Ambrose is like, babe? Babe, is everything okay? Let's deal with this together. Don't uh, shut me out, Kodiak. Um, at some point, they almost... Like, we're not, yeah, we're not it's, giving it's the Yeah, it's right about yet. here. No, it's right, it, right around here, because... They like after Ambrose like is like let's deal with it together, and then Kodiak finally lets him into his half of the ship, and they like hold each other and have like a full body ugly cry, and then they start making out, and then do a little like over the jumpsuit groping, <laughs> and they do some hot and heavy old Provo push. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For all my Mormons out there. <laughs> Who are push. definitely listening to uh yeah, gays in gay space. stories in space, yeah. You never know. <laughs> well, true. That one guy on uh Provo's most eligible, I think, actually came out and left the Mormon church. Good for him. Mm -hmm. Apparently it's hard to do. Yeah. But uh, after their little uh, Provo push sesh, they decide to go to the wa go to war with the ship, which I was like, hell yes, yeah. But I deeply disappointed because them going to war means that <laughs> Ambrose gets some defibrillator paddles, and Kodiak gets two wrenches, and they don't use either of them. They just yeah, have the awkward... ship just like fucks off. It's like whatever you guys want to do, go for it. The ship just kind of awkwardly goes, don't. 
Because uh, I believe the plan, they're going to plug in the uh, I Can't Lie AI into the ship, replacing the old one. Yeah, because they find out that there's a planet about four years away from them. So they're like, oh, we should redirect our <clears throat> course towards that planet, even though we don't know if it's habitable. But at least we right. know we're going somewhere. And they're like, well, the AI will never let us go off course. Yeah. So then they're like, let's replace the AI. But they're like stressing about the idea that like, well, if we replace the AI, we won't have access to things like ship navigation or life support. And Kodiak's like, don't worry, we can do all that on our own. Like, yeah. we'll just figure out ways to like set up fail saves. We'll get the oxygen going. We don't need the an OS to do that for us. And um, at some point, Ambrose says the uh, where let's go control. Let's take control of our destiny is the line of the book fringiest like the worst line of the book is at some point ambrose kodiak does something cool or good i think he gets control of the ship he plugs in the ai um and ambrose goes that's my kodiak and i'm like um, yuck they haven't even Shut like up. really established that they're together at that point and he's no. already claiming him And it's only maybe it's like it's the French when... though when you like make out your inner relationship with them. <laughs> yeah, uh, and when Kodiak is in the little compartment steering the ship towards this planet, making little micro corrections, um, which is so egregious, buddy. You're four years away. You don't need to be sitting up there making micro corrections every two and a half seconds. Kind of micromanagey. It is weird that he becomes, like, really hyper fixated on, like, wanting to, like, irradiate himself as much as possible. Well, yeah, and then he eventually comes down from the compartment, and Ambrose is like, oh my gosh, I was so worried. You've been up there forever and you weren't saying anything. And then uh, he's got all these, like, splotches all over his face, his hair's falling out, and I'm like, uh-oh, that's it for you guys. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, Ambrose was just like having a nap. He's like, I'll wait for you to turn the lights back on. And he like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He goes to have a little nap and uh, Kodiak kills himself with radiation poisoning. Uh, yeah. And the rest of the portion that we read is the deterioration of Kodiak and Ambrose yeah. just kind of taking care of him as he falls apart. Yeah, and they start trying to, like, make um, records for, like, their future clones because yeah. they both realize that, like, they're never going to make it to this planet before they both die. So Ambrose starts, like, um, leaving, like, memories and things and then getting Kodiak to do his own set of, like, memories and messages for future Kodiaks. Yeah. And um, Ambrose says about Kodiak, inside is a tender human yearning for love. You can provide <laughs> that love to him. And then I think this is when, like, the nicknames start coming out. <laughs> He, he calls him uh, Scrumpkin. Like, uh, when I first heard it, it felt like I ate something real bad. Yeah, like, like I got, it gave me Fluffer it, Skunk? It gave me heartburn, dude. <laughs> like, it's so yeah, bad. They're... It's so, it's not even, like, funny bad. It's just like, no, it's the, it's, it's... like Colleen Hoover bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also, like, you know when people try to, like, add words on the swears to make it more impactful like when people say fuck nugget oh i hate that yeah. so much it not only does it undercut <sighs> the swear but it also makes you sound like you're 12 you just sound like a fucking dork yeah it's big <laughs> dork energy but it's this like... is like when he's like ruffle skunk or whatever i'm like you added fluffer uh, skunk. You added like eight hundred more syllables onto that than you did, man. Yeah, it's really not good. Ew. Um, and then they come up with this plan. 
that made me like like full record scratch <laughs> hold up what are you guys talking about because when they realize they're going to die like kodiak is fully going to die before any of this happens uh that they're going to get to this planet they're pointing a ship at um ambrose is like well it's fine i'll just plug i'll just like plug the old ai back in mm -hmm. and i was like pump the brakes what do you mean you you overrode it when you plugged in the old one yeah so where did you like partition it did you put like how did first of all if it's still in the computer how is it sitting around waiting for you to like go oh, okay the little kids are going to be done playing in the pool here soon. I'll, <laughs> I'll take over when they're done. Because yeah. they just, like, fully... Also, uh, before they come up with this plan of plugging the, uh, the, the bad AI back in, they're like, well, our clones will take over after us. It's like, hold up! You turned off the AI, bud! How are you going to get those new clones? I know, and like we can speculate as much as we want, but like th there was no satisfying answer given as to how these things would be accomplished. No. Like maybe there was some kind of like time machine safeguard <laughs> in place to restore an older version of the hard drive after you erase it by accident, but like that's not given to yeah. us in any certain terms. We needed we needed a. A Leah Bardugo level of like, oh, that was here the whole time. Yeah, turns out Ambrose swallowed the previous AI <laughs> and just yeah. pukes it up and Genius. then plugs it back in. You can't <laughs> along with fifty-eight lock picks and a couple bombs. <laughs> oh, it just writes it. <laughs> um, but after they decide to, uh plug the old AI back in, the bad one. Yeah, but Kodiak dies first. Yes. He dies violently, uh, violently. in the nighttime. And Ambrose in Ambrose's is, arms. And Ambrose is like, I gotta get out of here. I hate being next to the <laughs> corpse. Yeah. And like Kodiak dies and then immediately he's like, oh, he smells like dead body and death and he's cold. Like that doesn't happen in three seconds. No. But he's like, I got to get out of here. Disgusting. Ooh, eh, bye. Love of my life. Uh, see you in the next one. Yeah. And the old AI gets plugged back in and the AI is like, oh, no, uh, there was an accident <laughs> in takeoff and you've been in a coma. But don't worry, you're back on your feet now. Ambrose yeah. was like, oh no, don't worry. Uh, I'm just here to wait for the next clone. And you can like see the dot, dot, <laughs> dot for the AI. Yeah. Like the AI is like, give, hold on, give me a minute. I have to think through. Mm -hmm. And the AI solution after thinking it through for a long time is to uh, vent the whole ship. And <laughs> yeah. Ambrose buckles himself in for some reason. Because he wants to die in his bed holding on to Kodiak. So he just sits there <laughs> and gets thrashed and broken as yeah. all the oxygen in the ship gets thrown out into space and he boils alive. But oh, cool, dude. At least you're in your fucking bed. He died on his own terms. Okay. <laughs> uh, and that's where it ends. For us this time yeah so i mean we can only hope that the next set of clones figure this shit out way better well they Earth got it quicker. it's the end of the book well there's technically okay so there's part three part four part five part six right three four more parts but one of them is like four minutes and i'm assuming Ooh, Oh, yeah, and one of them's, like, there's, like, two that are an hour long each, one that's 41 minutes, and then two that are a few minutes. So I assume those ones are very unsuccessful. They just wake up there's, and uh, are murdered immediately. Could be. They're the part three, I know, I almost read it today. Right. Um, part four and five are, like, four minutes apiece, and the last one yeah. is... Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, um, I hope that, I mean, we're going to have to find out what the ship's, like, real mission is at some point. We, one can um, hope. 
assuming the author knows what the ship's mission is. Boy, and can you imagine? Uh, if, that's a big if. <laughs> can you imagine if they let this man publish a book that didn't have an ending? Mm. That would be something. True. Yeah. Anyone who's ever written a trilogy. <laughs> well, not anybody, but a lot of young adult fantasy authors who were like, this is going to be a trilogy. This is going to so, be like an eight book series. Yeah. I'm just not going to like resolve any plot lines. Hey, that's. Oh, we got the episode was probably pretty short as a result. That's okay. That's fine. But next week, we're going to finish this book and pick a new one. Mm-hmm. Or not next week, the next next episode. Right. Pick a new book. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is very exciting because the list is full of bangers. Yeah, there's no there's no bad choices. Like, there's no, like... Um, Lee Bardugo or Colleen Hoover or Sarah <laughs> or J. Maas Carrie is on there. Oh God, I kind of forgot about her to be honest. <laughs> she really has fallen off of like book talk, I think too, or maybe it's just my like algorithm. That but lies. I used to see her stuff. Well, I think they read the second book. They're like, oh my God, it's like so much hotter. And I'm like, is it? Is it hot? Was the first one hot? No. Oh. Unless you find, unless you're like into brat play. <laughs> yeah, true. Anyway, folks. That's it. Catch you in two weeks for the, uh, the conclusion of the darkness outside us. Yeah, and hopefully it's exciting. Hopefully. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Bye. Bye.